Hello, my name is Brooke Rollerson. I'm here in Ecuador with Royal Flowers, visiting the most exquisite farm here on earth. It has been amazing to be able to see where flowers come from, where they're cultivated, where they're grown, and the process of the whole thing. It makes me appreciate these flowers so much more when I'm working with them in my professional flower shop. We traveled to Quito, Ecuador, went to the farm. It's rainy one moment, not the next. It's sunny, it's 45 degrees in the morning, it gets up to 87 degrees in the afternoon, and then it's cold again. Nothing ever changes, there's no seasons, anything like that. But then you walk into Royal Flowers and you're in a wonderland because everything is a little bit more controlled. It was not at all what I expected. I thought that it was going to be a row of rose bushes, 40 blooms on each bush. It's anywhere from one to two blooms depending on the variety a month. I imagined all these blown open roses, but these are really nice fresh blooms. I know it sounds really weird to say that worms are a beautiful part, but they have a job too. They're such an important part of the fertilizer and the compost that goes into these roses. Royal Flowers is very self-sustainable to where that everything they need for these roses is done right there on the property. I love Cotopaxi. It was beautiful. It's the world's tallest active volcano. To know that it's providing melting glacier of water flowing down into the reservoirs on these farms and all of the rainwater that is collected and then reused, it's just amazing to me that we don't have to take water from other parts. This is nature providing to nature. The plastic that goes on top of the greenhouse is changed not as needed but as required. The plastic filters the daylight and is used to control the color of the roses. It is a requirement for the roses to have so much UV protection by variety. Whether it's got a hole in it or whether it's still nice and beautiful, but that plastic is still changed out in the greenhouses. Not to mention that they put a lot of scientific research into to make sure that it is the best thing for their plants. The harvesters are now looking at each rose bush to decide which roses are best for the cut stage. They look at the top of them, the length of them, they look at all different criteria to make sure that they're ready for harvest today. Post cosecha is the Spanish word for post harvest. The way that these roses are handled, the way that they're wrapped, the way that they're packaged, to be able to open up those roses and say, okay, I know for a fact it's a red and white label, it is going to be superb. These thorns are stripped on the bottom third of this rose pack. They do that on purpose. They're actually thinking about us. When we sit there and say, oh, all this packaging, there's plastic here and there's cardboard here and paper there. Now I know what all of that means and I know for a fact that every paper, cardboard, staple, and strip is placed for a reason. And it, I appreciate it so much more. We know that there's one very important thing for our flowers and that's the cold chain. That from the farm level to the retail environment, there's never a break in temperature. And that's super important to anyone that's going to receive flowers or anyone that's going to use the flowers. The roses are cut and kept at a cooler or in transit of four degrees Celsius or 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Their life cycle has been put on hold so that they are going to be the freshest possible flowers that we get in the retail environment. As a retailer and as a florist, we're only as good as our flowers. I think on a daily basis I can look through that catalog and that website and find everything that I could possibly need for any wedding, any event, and any everyday arrangement. I can find the best flowers that the market has to offer all under one roof at Royal Flowers.